If you've not been following along this far, this is episode three of flipping 18 mismatched nightstands in an assembly line because I want to know how profitable furniture flipping can be if you're really efficient. I have already prepped all 18 nightstands and refinished the white batch. So if you've missed that, make sure to go back and watch my last video. In this video, I am going to be showing you the process of refinishing the black batch from start to finish. In the first video, I spun a wheel to see which nightstands would be finished in three different batches of white, black, and faux wood. Those are my top three selling finishes, but I wanna put it to the test and see which ones will sell for the most and the quickest. For the three sets of black nightstands, I spun number one, number four, and number six. Set number one, I bought at the warehouse for $25 each, so I'm $50 in. For set number four, I bought the first nightstand at the warehouse for $25, and then the next nightstand I bought for $30 at Goodwill. So I'm $55 in on set number four. And for set number six, I also bought at the warehouse for $100 for the set. So I kind of paid up for that one, but it's a very large set of nightstands. I went more in depth on the prep work in the last video, but the overall design goal is to make the mismatched nightstands look like they belong together. For the first set, I really wanted the feet to match the angular legs of the other nightstand, so I went ahead and replaced it with something a little more rectangular. I'm really not a fan of the hardware that these legs come with, so I opted to just drill some pilot holes and screw them in instead. For some reason, I got the bright idea to also add glue for extra support, which I will come to regret later. I really felt that the circular trim that was previously on the big Broyhill nightstands was going to cause it not to sell, so I opted for something a little bit more streamlined. Because I'm painting these nightstands, all I really need to do is scuff sand with 220 grit sandpaper to smooth out the surfaces and allow my paint to adhere. Whenever I have really curved surfaces, I need to scuff sand like this. I like to grab my Surf Prep Pro Foam pads because it contours really nicely to the shape. They make sizes to fit all types of sanders and you can use code ABBY10 for 10% off. Both pine and dark red stains are known for bleeding through paint, so I went ahead and sealed it with a clear shellac beforehand. The reason I'm not using a regular primer is because I have all-in-one paints, and I knew that I wanted to go in and distress some of the pieces to showcase some of the wood through. I'm taking it back to my old school ways of painting on a tarp in the driveway slash grass, because that's how I started. I was in the yard of our single wide trailer before I ever had a garage and it works just fine. The reason I'm doing this is because I wanna go ahead and spray the black pieces while the white ones dry. So this just lets me do more pieces at one time. I definitely never thought the day would come that I'm using all of my paint sprayers at once. I'm going to be using just kind of a mixture of blacks that I have left over all in one paint because I don't want to buy more product. I'm just going to use what I have.
All right, so maybe you guys can help me out here, but I used Dixie Bell paint and I could not get it to spray right through the Wagner sprayer. I think that it's just so much thicker than what I'm used to and the Wagner has a fine nozzle spray tip that can't be swapped out. So I'm thinking that the paint was just too thick for this sprayer. There is a larger nozzle attachment for the Wagner, but I didn't have enough paint to swap between reservoirs. And I think that would just use way more material than necessary. This is easily the worst cut of paint I have ever done in my life. It is so stripy. And I've thinned the paint out so much that if I thin it anymore, I think I'm going to be lacking durability of the paint. I don't know if it's the sprayer or if it's the paint. Also, it's getting super windy out here and the old crumbs on this tarp are starting to blow into the paint. So I think I might take it back in there to paint. I have to wait another day. <sighs> super aggravating. When in doubt, roll it out. A quarter nap roller is always my choice over a foam roller because you can load up more paint and avoid getting that flashy streaking that you do with foam rollers. Now, I personally have really been loving a dark, distressed looking finish, so I decided that I would test it out on one set, and I decided that this would be the perfect set since it has all the nice curvy lines. Now, I know that modern furniture always sells the best, so I'm going to be very curious to see how this plays into the factor of sellability. To seal in my newly distressed finish, I like to use this warm black wax by The Real Milk Paint Company. Because the base is a charcoal black and not a jet black, this black wax just really adds a nice layer of depth and dimension that looks velvety. This height difference is driving me nuts, so I'm gonna see if I can take off those feet, even though I glued them. shorter but they definitely are a lot closer in height okay i can't even tell you how glad i am that i took the feet off of that nightstand because it turned out so good i actually really love that they aren't a perfect match they're fraternal twins not identical but really the most important thing is that they're the same height so when they're on either side of somebody's bed it's going to look at least symmetrical I'm curious to know what your opinion is on this. Would you have left the bun feet, the angular feet, or taken them off? For this set, what I think made the biggest difference was actually changing the hardware placement. 
Of course, I'm biased to this set because I really love a moody, distressed finish and the design lines are just beautiful. However, if you remember from before, it just looked a little bit crazy with all that hardware. And somehow now they just really complement each other even though they're so different. Even though they came from two completely different places, I really feel like they were meant to be together. I definitely know that this isn't a look that everybody is going to love, but personally, I'm obsessed with it and I think it looks the most high-end out of all 18 nightstands. Is Distressed Furniture going to make its way back into the furniture world? Because I think so. I might be alone in this, but you're going to be seeing a lot more Distressed Furniture from me. As for this final set, I feel like Broy Hill was trying a little bit too hard to bring Art Deco into early 2000s furniture. So updating that trim on top really let it flow better with the legs and the overall design of the piece, bringing it back into the 21st century. Maybe you prefer the original design with the circular trim, however, you have to remember that I'm in the business of making a profit here, and I think this is what will sell. Out of the white and the black nightstand sets so far, I have to say that the black sets are my favorite. Set number four is definitely my favorite by far, which I did not expect because they are probably the least matching of the nightstands, but they just complement each other so nicely. I think that the distressed finish and the wax just really adds that extra dimension. Again, it's not for everybody. So for the other two sets, I just went with a clean black finish because I really want to give the black nightstands a chance against the white and the faux wood. As far as pricing these nightstands, set number one, the pine nightstands, I priced at $350 because they are smaller and very mismatched. These don't look alike at all, but that's okay. I think that $350, hope get 300 out of it will be a very fair price. For set number four, I priced a little bit higher at $400 just because this is a specialty finish. I think that these are really beautiful nightstands and it also was a little bit more work for me to go in and do the distressing and then adding the black wax on top. And for set number six, I priced high at $475 because they are such big nightstands and they're Broy Hill. So that name brand just adds a little bit more value to them. Large nightstand sets that are identical are very hard to come by. So probably gonna stay very firm on that 475 price. So in the last video, I put out my hypothesis for which white set of nightstands would sell first. And I can't do that for this set because one of the black sets already sold. So I'm going to have to let you guess in the comments which nightstand set you think already sold and you'll find out in the very last video of this series which color nightstand sold for the most and what was the total profit breakdown. So make sure you don't miss it and come back for the next video. Stop it Hannah, that's not nice. If you want to be on the video, you have to be a lady.